made the birds of the air. They are already a higher form than the fish. But then he goes to mammals and animals and then last of all Adam which is linked with the word Adamach the red earth is made. Now Adam man is able to engage with these other creatures to some extent. We even have the scene of his giving a name to each one. But then something else happens. I remember how Monsignor Stocciali, who I was very fond of because he was our founder, a good man of God, the Bishop of Montalcino, who came to give us our annual retreat at Sant'Antimo, how he described once this scene and how Adam was in a deep sleep. Then he woke up slightly and just opened one eye. Then he opened another eye and things were notably changed. It was not a giraffe standing next to him, but flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. And with this new entity he could truly engage. We are not left alone. We are part of the family of creation and higher animals, dogs, horses, can have a certain rapport, but between humans there is far more, but it can go awfully, awfully wrong. But only here once, and Eden, Eden, the garden of delight, was actually made of harmony until this jarring note was introduced by the serpent. The Church Fathers have looked into this sequence of events and some have commented on the fact that the initial wave of creation had to do with light and darkness. And some have noted that that could mean more than meets the eye. That the first order of creation was in the angelic domain. And what does the name of the brightest of angels actually mean? Bringer of light. Lucifer. So before we came on track, a lot had already happened. And so when Adam and Eve were there, without realising it, they were fighting against the odds. Because as in the angelic sphere, the Creator did not want robots, but beings that consented before having the plenitude of beatific vision, so too, in the case of man, we had an element of will. He did not want robots. And that explains pain and catastrophe. It is the result of the free gift. It is better in the mind of God that we be free but that we be just automata, not able to have a part in gaining merit for eternal life. But we notice after each wave of invention and creation that he admires his work and finds that it was very good, not just good but very good. And some elements we have not lost from our original Edenic state. The reason, although damaged because of passion, still distinguishes truth from falsehood and can calculate very well. We also have a notion of beauty. And by the way, if that has gone in our time, 
giving place to ugliness and chaos in music and art, then it shows that we are actually regressing. For the great artists of history knew well what beauty was. Indeed, Pope Benedict indicated that the argument from beauty is one of the arguments for God, the via procritudinis, the way of beauty. It goes towards a maximum. And we have it from God. We have it also, the one thing perhaps that we do really have in common with the angels, the capacity to create harmony and music even with natural means. We can go into harmony even with two, much more with three and four. And when it is done well, it is actually consoling and links us with the order of creation and of angels. The Gospel hits us between the eyes. And we might ask ourselves whether we are worthy also of this title of hypocrites. That beauty that we have in common with the angels, we are meant to exercise supremely when giving glory to God. As we have in the Council documents, we have this reminder that we are in our liturgy reproducing on earth liturgy of heaven, which we find in the Apocalypse, also in Isaiah, holy, holy, holy. But that is not just external, and this is where the Lord is hitting hard. Beauty without charity is hypocrisy, and we can become so much orientated towards perfection of the execution, the tradition of the elders, that we can actually lose and miss the point. God is honoured only when the heart is actually engaged and when that heart is pure. And purity of heart in the Desert Fathers was seen to operate on two levels. Purity of love and therefore forgiveness and no bitterness and purity of desire with no wandering thoughts and desires where they're not worthy. Questo Vangelo ci mette davanti l'ipocrisia di quelli che facevano tutto a livello della ritualità ma in cui mancava il cuore. Il Signore nel creare l'uomo ha dato tanti doni, persi alcuni, ma non tutti, della caduta originale. Abbiamo ritenuto la ragione, anche se è un po' danneggiata, però funziona ancora, perché l'influenza della passione fa che non ragioni sempre perfettamente, però è capace di farlo e anche della bellezza. Nel culto creiamo la bellezza e in questo abbiamo qualcosa in comune con gli angeli. E i padri hanno visto nella creazione della luce anche forse un suggerimento di una creazione invisibile angelica. Infatti il nome dell'angelo Lucifero, che era brillante, era portatore della luce. Chissà se questa luce e tenebra era già una lotta cosmica, non descritta nel Genesi, però presente nel sottofondo, perché la creazione è cominciata lì. E questo abbiamo ancora in comune, che la liturgia celeste e quella terrestre è unita nella creazione della bellezza, l'armonia che siamo capaci di creare. Grazie al Creatore di aver lasciato questa consolazione nell'umanità. E oggi vediamo che questo si sta perdendo, 
perché la bellezza manca nella musica e nell'arte. Il caos subentra, la cacofonia che non dà gloria al creatore. I grandi artisti, i grandi musicisti hanno lasciato un heritage di consolazione all'umanità, soprattutto nel campo del culto. In Austria, Germania, Inghilterra, Francia, Italia, tanti grandi maestri hanno arricchito la Chiesa e l'umanità insieme. E nel Galles, nel culto galese, la musica è centrale. Vanno in armonia automaticamente. Gioia nel creare bellezza per Dio. Godiamo di questo creato e anche impariamo a fare come Dio Padre ha fatto dopo il suo lavoro ha preso riposo. Una settima parte del tempo è ridata a lui e la Madonna alla Salette ha pianto in parte perché non fu data. Gli uomini non smettono, non smettono mai. E Dio autore di tutto e del tutto dimenticato. Dolce senti.
So